Good afternoon and welcome to this month's United Way Facebook Live. Uh, October, it is the celebration of all things and all awarenesses, kind of seems like. Um, so we're going to get into that in just a second. But before we do, I want to thank all of, your, all of our sponsors, um, especially uh, this month we've got um, Kimberly Clark, Moz, APM Terminals, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, who are making all of our extra media outreach um, possible this quarter. Welcome, everybody. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So, so Jill, our president and CEO, writes a blog every month, and this month she was talking about the fact that there are 111 different, or na different national awareness campaigns um, and she made mention of several that fall under the umbrella of our partnerships, our partner agencies. Um, so Down Syndrome Awareness, Emotional Intelligence Awareness, um, Financial Planning Month, Head Start Awareness Month, Health Literacy, uh, National Bullying Prevention, National Disability Employment Awareness, uh, Domestic Violence Awareness, Dropout Prevention, Learning and Development, Tracking Hunger, and Talking About Prescriptions. So just a short list there, but all of those um, are directly related to work that our partner agencies do. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that. And um, and then we have the gang from Penelope House that are going to talk about um, what they have in the month of October. But I, I want to start with Trista, who wrote um, her blog this month about celebrating the victories. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Trista? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like Leslie mentioned, and also in Jill's blog, just about how many um, causes or nonprofit agencies are celebrating Awareness Month. And in the nonprofit field, I'm sure I have other people that may have had the same feeling. Sometimes whenever you go to work and your boots on the ground on the front lines, you, you may feel like you're not making a difference. And so... The community can support us by helping all of us spread awareness about the various causes um, and by participating in a, a walk. The Buddy Walk was a couple weekends ago at the battleship and I wasn't able to attend, but I drove by and it looked like it was a fabulous fun time. Um, and then also um, Penelope House, I saw where you guys were partnering with some local businesses to offer purple treats this month to raise awareness about domestic violence. So when, when you wear a purple shirt or a purple jacket or a pink shirt, I was at um, Crown Healthcare in Thomasville yesterday and they were having pink week for breast cancer awareness. And all of the um, healthcare staff was wearing some form of pink. So you're you're starting the conversation, like why are you wearing pink, or why are you wearing purple, or why are you wearing blue? And you're planting the seed to to have that opportunity to talk about that cause, talk about why um, why it's important for the services that are provided by our partner agencies and things that people can do, how the community can support us in ensuring that resources are available to those that, that need it. And so that was why my blog was celebrated or focused on celebrating the victories, because it may just be a simple conversation, but you're opening the door or providing access or information to, to new resources or helping make a, a, a connection. Thank you, Tris. I think that's important. Um, you know, it's hard for us to see sometimes when we're in the weeds that they're and when we're able to step back. That that although it feels like there's always another issue, or gosh, it seems like there's always another person in trouble. But the fact of the matter is, is there just that, just like that, there's still people being helped every day, and we need to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. um, Tony Ann, um, or Farron, tell us about October for you guys. Well, I was just going to follow up with what she said, because with the events in the community, a lot of times people will say, I don't know how to help. And then when we have an event in the community, like we had the one with Cammie's Old Dutch, 
where, um, you know, for a day, if you went and had ice cream, a percentage would go to Penelope House. And then this past Monday, we had one with Pusackley's on Dolphin Street, where they did the same thing. If you, you know, ordered, whether you were in the lobby or the drive through a percentage of sales went to Penelope House. And when you looked at social media, I mean, they were, they were shared over a hundred times. I mean, and you, you know, the views, it was like, you know, 4,000 plus views kind of stuff because, you know, people see, oh, that's an opportunity. I can help. I can do something. And even if it is eating some Pusaclis or, or, you know, some ice cream, at least I'm doing something to help the cause. So I, I think a lot of times um, when you have an awareness month or an awareness event, it kind of gives people a little, a little better understanding of who you are, but it also gives them the opportunity to get involved. Right. I, I definitely agree um, because the whole point of Domestic Violence Awareness Month is to promote public awareness. And like Tony Ann said, we're able to do that with our uh, community partners as well as trainings and awareness. Like we have a lunch and learn with the DA's office. We've had um, also other informational uh, trainings with Spring Hill. So it's, it's really a community um, event. You know, we're, we're able to reach out to everybody in the community. And like Tony Ann said, it's shared. You know, that's one good thing about social media. You know, a lot of people use it every day and um, we're able to uh, promote awareness on there as well. So what other kinds of stuff have you been doing um, this month to celebrate? Oh, well, I guess I don't know if celebrate is the right word, but to bring awareness to um, domestic violence in our community. One of our, each year, every year, we do a domestic violence awareness display. And we start the display, um, you know, in September, as far as working with clients in the shelter and their children on making some kind of artwork. Um, and through the years, it's been everything from where we've had masks to talk about the faces of domestic violence where people decorated masks. You know, we had shoes one year where, you know, kind of walking in the victim's shoes to better understand things. Just every year, we try to come up with something different. Last year, we had birdhouses that people decorated. Um, most of us last year were very familiar with the stay at home kind of um, with COVID. And so the shelter was the home that people decorated. And this year we kind of still went with the theme of peace on earth begins at home, which is our motto. And we had wooden peace signs. And so I actually was just at the airport, regional airport, and that's where it's on display right now. And people, not only clients in shelter and not only staff, but community partners decorated these wooden peace signs um, as a way of kind of showing through art, whether it's someone's story, whether it's the um, hope, or whether it's the um, the awfulness of experiences, the horrific experiences, you know, it, often the, the displays will show a bit of horror, a bit of sadness, a bit of hope, a bit of um, triumph. So we use those displays and, and you know, we let them non-COVID times, they travel throughout the community. And again, with partnering agencies, it would be at Art Walk and it would be at Brown Bag and Bienville and it would be a part of our community where people go by and it it's thought provoking. Um, you hope it, it generates conversations and things like that. And you know, even in our rural communities that we serve, they also have displays in their communities as well, um, because it's a conversation that we highlight in October. But really, the conversation is year round. So, um, what else did you guys have? Some other stuff going on. We did. I feel, like, we, I feel like I've seen stuff happening like every other day. So. It, it really was. We literally had something I know at least every week. Um, another good thing we also work with, we'll partner with Lifelines Counseling. They were able to do um, some trainings regarding uh, dating. You know, what are the symptoms of dating violence that's escalating? Because a lot of victims don't understand the cycle of abuse uh, and many that we have here once they leave shelter, you know, they thank us because we have provided them with that um, education. So Lifeline the, did a tremendous job um, this year with that. And they also um, did a training on the neurobiology of trauma as well, because uh, a lot of people think that it's, it's so easy to leave a domestic violence situation. Well, it's not because it is a psychological abuse, you know, so it, it, pays to have um, 
other counselors and therapists and psychologists uh, to partner with us to kind of explain the mental health side um, of domestic violence. And then, you know, also what we do every October, too, is we recognize the importance of law enforcement. And so whether it's the sheriffs or the police departments in all four of our counties, Mobile, Washington, Clark, and Choctaw, every year we um, take this time to thank them that, for all that they do, not only to keep, um, you know, victims safe in the community, but, but Penelope House staff. We've had several times where perpetrators are trying to, you know, get on our campus or threatening mm-hmm. us. Um, you know, they keep victims safe when they're going to court, they escort them to court. There are a lot of efforts that law enforcement makes in regards to safety, but also in apprehending perpetrators and, and doing their best to, to hold them accountable, you know, for the actions that they've taken. So, you know, this year we had um, popcorn bags and we delivered popcorn to all the different precincts and, and you know, substations and all those kind of things. And um, it's just one of one way that we can remind them that we appreciate what they do. And, you know, that's the most dangerous call for law enforcement to respond to. And when you look at national statistics, not just Alabama, not just Mobile, you see a lot of fatalities, you know, involve law enforcement that were responding to domestic violence calls. So, you know, a lot of times they got a tough job because when you respond to a domestic violence call, there's a lot of emotions going on. And sometimes, you know, it's difficult to kind of ascertain what really happened and who's the primary aggressor and all these kind of things in the midst of emotions. And when children are involved, you know, it just elevates emotions as well as trying to make sure that they're protecting who needs to be protected. Yeah, they they do an amazing job and we all um, need to stop and and remember to thank them, uh, all of the first responders for all their outstanding service um, on all of the whole spectrum of first responders, but especially our law enforcement. Um, Trista, I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but I'm going to. Do you, you, can you think of some other activities that some of our partners are doing this month? Um, I feel like Drug Drug Educational Council, I think they've got their red Yep, uh, red, it's, ribbon yeah. week. It's, it's Red Ribbon Week this week. My both of my children have been participating, so um, so they're really doing that community outreach. I've got to applaud all of the local schools for really um, thinking outside of the box and being creative with how they are celebrating the different themes. Um, one of the local schools here in Clark County yesterday was um, don't get mixed up with drugs. And so they're all wearing match match clothes. It was very mm-hmm. interesting. Um, I think my daughter's favorite thus far was Monday. It was uh, something about your, your life is the most precious gift that you have. And so they got, she got to dress up as a princess. And so of course that was right <laughs> up her alley. <laughs> But um, is, is that your daughter that proclaimed herself queen of the parking uh, the park? Yes, that's the project yes. day. That fits right <laughs> in there. Um, but something I would like to spend a little bit more time on was just the partnerships that have been mentioned on this call. And again, you know, at United Way of Southwest Alabama, we see ourselves as the safety net of the community. So Penelope House works with Lifelines, and then Lifelines, of course, works with several other of our partner agencies in the community. And we make those connections. Um, We help the clients or the people that we support connect the dots to all of the different needs that they may have. So um, Leslie just put up our 211 number. That's the point to start. If you're in need, if you're looking for resources and may not have a clear path, call 211. They would love to help you and share information about the resources in your community. You know, I, I take your point where you were saying, as I'm looking at this list again, um, like um, literacy, like that falls under... Mm-hmm. like half of our partner agencies and they work together and then we're looking through um, Down Center Awareness well that's several of our partners that deal with developmental um, disabilities mm-hmm. uh, so really the Awareness Month 
can can highlight how people work together, which I think Tony, that's what Tony Ann was talking about. Um, but it seems like it, there's this broader umbrella, but it really um, connects a, a different, a bunch of different ways um, through our partners and and even into the broader community, which is is very cool. Um, and that gives people more access points. I think is is another important thing because um, access. Is, is one of the, the barriers for a lot of folks in reaching services and, and finding out how to get help. So, right. you know, and bringing it back kind of to our world, um, when you list all those agencies, you know, in my mind, the first thing that comes to, to, to my, you know, the mind is that um, domestic violence knows no boundaries. So, in any of those situations and agencies, they'll often call us and say, hey, what do we need to do in this situation kind of stuff? Um, and it's the same as, as us if we have a client who um, needs um, help, medical health care or a specialist or something like that. We've talked with Victory Health. Or if they need a prescription that needs filled, um, we may reach out to Ozanam. So, I mean, you know, a safety net has got a lot of parts and pieces to that net. And I think um, we all know each other because we've been around a while, but we know how to link each other. Um, our agencies where we can do what's best for our clients and make sure that they hopefully can get most of their needs met. And to kind of piggyback off of the um, children with, well, population of special needs, we've also uh, began to work a lot with Alta Point. We had a great in-service a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and we're able to receive a lot of uh, new information that we did not have because it's almost like a one-stop shop. You know, they can be seen for their mental health. They can have counseling. There are other specialized services. So that in itself um, was able to help not only us, but the clients as well, because they're able to receive those additional, you know, services through um, partners that we work with. And a lot of funding has become available. So there mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, old and true partners now have new services or new programs. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a constant learning curve because things change. Our services pretty much are, are constant in what we do as far as emergency shelter and you know the things that we offer our clients. But like I said, when um you know when a new resource, a new service like that comes down or a new program we want to make sure that, that, that we're tapping into them as much as possible to, to help our clients. So I think it's good, you know, what the United Way also does too, is make sure that, that we are aware of each each program and each, you know, things that are being offered and things that might be changed or, um, you know, new funding opportunities as well where we can, you know, reach more people and, and provide more services. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we had a good discussion. Let's go around and give final thoughts. And um, then we'll let everyone go enjoy the rest of their afternoon. Krista? Yeah. So really the moral of this story <laughs> is, you know, participate in that walk or that 5K. Um, because when you go to that event, not only are you making a difference at that agency or supporting that cause, um, you are, you may have the opportunity to learn more and then share it on social media. Let everybody know that you took the time out of your day. I'm kind of a little upset that I missed Foo Sackley's on Monday. Fried chicks <laughs> and ice cream are like one and two on my list. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do continue the good work because you are making a difference. Mm -hmm. My thing. Yep. I was mm -hmm. going to say, you know, and another thing that we haven't talked about too is, is really a nonprofit agency isn't successful without a board and an active board. And when you have those events in the community too, that gives another thing for your board members to participate in too. And, and, and allows them to have some very meaningful um, encounters. Um, I know one of our board members at Foo Sackley's, when someone was going through line, they shared with her that they had passed it to the open house in the past and how appreciative they were of their services. And, you know, that really touched her heart and made her proud that she was a board member and certainly makes her want to you know, get more involved and even, you know, do better things. So that those are, are great encounters to have as well. Absolutely. And I agree. Um, during a uh, 
a, a training that we had with one of our outreach counselors. Uh, she was, I believe, at Spring Hill, and she had several students come up to her, you know, and was like, hey, we didn't know, uh, you know, that I didn't know that I was in a situation. So again, I'm big on advocacy and education because what you don't know, you don't know, you know, and once, once you learn it, you can able, you know, to do better and then also spread it um, as well. So I, I think the month of October is not only big for adults, but, you know, we have the college students, the high school students, we have a great prevention education program here that goes out into all of the schools and all of the four counties that we uh, work with. So I, I think promoting um, awareness through our educational uh, program and outreach service is big because not all of our clients are willing to come into shelter. So I think having that additional, uh, you know, prevention education service, outreach service, victim support group um, will continue to um, promote is where awareness in our community as well. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. I think we've had a really good conversation and we are happy to help be yet another opportunity to spread the word into the community about um, what you guys are doing, what, what United Way is doing and, and many of our partners are doing. We'll be back. Um, next month but probably early because thanksgiving so we'll be the, the thursday before thanksgiving um and once again i want to thank our sponsors you saw them scrolling across the bottom especially blue cross blue shield apm terminals kimberly clark and Morris. so thank you again and everybody have a wonderful rest of their day thank you thank you